right guys, tonight I'm going to tell you about what I use uh, for filming and content creation to help some of you all uh, get started if you're interested in uh, kind of expanding into, into that territory. Uh, first of all, I'm going to start out with my big camera. I choose a Sony mirrorless. Uh, this is the a7 III. It's a pretty good balance between still shot megapixels to get you uh, that high resolution in case you want to make prints or whatever but it also shoots uh you know 4k shoots great slow-mo and uh, it's what i used during the uh, hobie tarpon video that i put out last year uh, you'll see on top here i have a rode video mic it's got the wind sock on it you definitely want to have uh you know some kind of buffer there on those windy days just so it doesn't blow your sound out uh, the lens that I have on here is a Sony uh, 70 to 200. This is a good zoom lens. Uh, you're going to need your subject to be five or six feet out just so it doesn't take up uh, the whole frame. But as far as like long shots, uh, the tarpon jumping, if any of y'all saw that, uh, that was with this 70 to 200. Uh, it's a great overall lens. I went with the F4. It's a little bit lighter, a little bit easier to pack. I also have a 24 to 105 millimeter lens. I use that for like in-person interviews. It's also great for the detail shots. If you're going to get up close on a subject, uh, you know, like kind of the cinematic sliding the rods into the rod holders, that, that kind of thing, uh, tying on the baits, rigging up. Uh, it's better to have a lens that will allow you to get closer to the subject uh, without using so much zoom. Uh, a couple other things. To go with a big camera, I also have uh, a road leak. Uh, lavalier mic. I use this, you know, you run it up under somebody's shirt, clip it on, you put the, put the receiver on your big camera. Uh, this is going to give you good audio quality and again you can use it for interviews or if you're trying to do, you know, some kind of on the water talking walkthrough deal, you can use it for that and that's just going to provide you with super clear audio. Uh, moving on to the GoPro side, so if you, you know, if you don't want to go with a big camera, if you're not going to be doing content creation stuff where you're going to have your own cameraman, uh, a lot of us self film and the best, the best in my opinion, Jay, Jay Wallen will probably argue with this, uh, but the Hero 9, I picked up a couple of these. I had the Hero 8 and it was good. The image stabilization was insane. Um, I'm actually filming this on a Hero 9 right now. So you can see that the audio quality is very good especially compared to the older gopros that had the housing uh, they were known for just having terrible audio uh, but that the eights and nines are both really good uh, they're waterproof you know i have a, a small gimbal here so this gimbal you put your gopro on the gimbal and you can really get some some sick shots you know panning up and down the kayak uh, launching, you know, following following one of your friends, dragging down a trail. It's really going to kind of give you that extra dimension of movement. And with the in-body stabilization, you can you can do a lot of that without the gimbal, but that gimbal is just going to make it, you know, super smooth, give you a, you know, a flawless look. Uh, in some later videos, I'm going to walk you through kind of the editing process on some of these videos, and uh, hopefully that'll give you a little better idea of why you would need something like that. Uh, versus just going with the in-body stabilization that, that's factory on these cameras. With the GoPros, you can uh, you can mount them you know, on your hat. I know Rex Del Rey, he makes a, a really cool product called Action Hat. So you can mount the camera on the hat. It's got a frame, a foam frame built in. And also, you know, you have the head straps, you have the chesty straps. It'll give you kind of uh, a view of your hands and the rod. On a kayak, I like to have a high-mounted camera behind me that kind of gives you a broad view of the action that's happening out in front of you, and then also a camera facing back on myself so I can see facial expressions and what happens when I screw up or break a fish off. Another good mounting point is like down on a rail to your side where generally the side you net the fish on, you can get some really good action shots uh, from that angle as well. And I'm gonna show you Something else that this this is not at all a necessity as far as filming, but this really brings videos alive. So this is a drone. This is the Mavic Air. I've had this for a couple years now, and when you 
put drone footage in it, it's such a different point of view that it really it really brings the audience you know it, it's like it's taking them to a, to a different world because it's something that you're not used to seeing you know you're not used to being 30 or 40 feet up in the air looking down on these on these weed lines or going through a creek and it can really it can really add some nice cinematic footage in at the beginning or the end of a clip or if you're doing a transition like from one area to another uh, it's really cool to to be able to throw some drone footage in this is a relatively cheap uh, piece of equipment here and uh, like I said I, I think I think if you're getting serious about content creation, having a drone, you it has a self-follow feature. You can put it in the air and, and do some casting and things. The battery life is about, I get about 18 minutes or so per battery on this one, which isn't terrible. You have a couple different options as far as the remote goes. This is the, the remote that comes with it. Uh, for this, you, you open it up and, and it holds your cell phone right here and you basically fly it off of your cell phone monitor. I actually just upgraded to a Mavic Pro 2 and I went with uh, the smart controller. So what this allows me to do is not get my phone out on the water fumbling around trying to put it in that uh, in that controller. So I think this works great. It's got a built-in screen. It is a little pricey. So, you know, that's something you kind of need to look at as far as, as what you're going to budget for. But overall, you know, GoPro would be my, my first... My first purchase if I were getting into content creation you could do a lot with it as far as action shots and then you can add the gimbal you can get as cinematic as you want to uh, with the production quality it's high definition you know it's gonna be 4k um, and I, I usually shoot I think it's 2.7 K a little smaller file size great resolution on the hero nines it has a zoom feature you can preset your zoom so if you know the action is going to be happening a little further out you can preset your zoom on there uh, from there i would recommend going uh going with a drone that would be my second purchase and then lastly as you get more serious into it uh, whether you're doing it for yourself or you're trying to do it commercially and sell some of this footage to these companies i would i would then upgrade to uh to a larger DSLR or, or mirrorless camera. I hope this has helped at least give you an idea on where to get started. And like I said, in future videos, I'm gonna walk you through the editing process and kind of what I look for as far as putting together a great video. Thanks.